down inside Tuscaloosa City Schools. A TCS teacher has created a museum in his classroom. And students are the curators. We'll explain. Plus, TCTA and Woolen Forest Elementary School partner for a program that stresses reading. And we've got highlights from the volleyball courts and football fields around Tuscaloosa. All this and more is coming up now. Thanks for joining us today for Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools. I'm Eddie McClinton. A local teacher is providing a unique experience for his students. It's a place they can go where a few students have gone before. It started with SpaceX and there was a, a patch that they pre-released and it's the Falcon Heavy. And so the Falcon Heavy patch we had to, to pre-order and it, Elon Musk launched a Tesla into, into space and I thought it was the coolest thing and it started with one patch and then it grew into all of this. Overwhelming. It was a lot of stuff when we first come in. It was like all like bang, stuff. But it was still very like, you know, fun just to look at. And with that, teacher Will Flowers launched a space museum at the Alberta School of Performing Arts. Just some of the things that we have in here are uh, a SpaceX exhibit, we've got International Space Station, we've got every International Space Station patch, every SpaceX patch, every Gemini, uh, Mercury and Apollo mission patch, all the STS mission patches, and uh, right now we're really looking forward to the Artemis missions to start diving a little bit further into that as well. Well thought out, just how everything looks and everything, like spaceships, um, replicas of stuff, badges over there, and like patchwork still behind me. The vast majority of the material has been donated by collectors, former NASA employees, and other space fans who wanted to see it used as a teaching tool for students. As a teaching tool, it, it's, it started to take place really the second semester last year as we started to, to get donations of, of material for the museum and we would kind of implement in we would implement it into lessons in order to further explain civics principles or exploration principles and things like that. And I think it's it's really what what's really interesting to me is the fact that so many people have been so giving when it comes to this because it, I mean it really is just kind of a a transfer of history from from one hands to well their hands and, and I guess just when we're able to hold things like this and, and the other like items in here, it, it really makes it real. It, it really brings history to them. And I think that's the most important thing. Student interest is high and they're having a blast researching the history behind the museum pieces. All right, so right now the students uh, are working on analyzing an object. And so with that object, whether it be a space patch or a time piece from the Apollo missions or even the SpaceX missions, they'll, they'll analyze that piece and they'll start to piece together information about it. And so what this can help me address is, are they able to, to cite textual evidence? Are they able, to, are they able to, to piece together the important information? Are they able to effectively communicate it to, to peers their age, or peers that are younger, or peers that are older? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yes. There's 17. How many Apollo missions? Are, we got to Apollo 17, right? However, some of those missions, you know, weren't manned flights, things like that. So this year, the what I need or when period has allowed more students to participate in the exploration of the materials in the museum. Flowers is allowing students to become the curators. And so the students in the classroom now are, are working on this enrichment opportunity in order to, to further research, in order to, to dive into some of those principles that define what a historian actually is. And we can use this time, this 25 minutes, in order to, to not only further guide what we're talking about in class, but to, to kind of dive into these extracurricular studies that actually can tie into the curriculum. Woodland Forest Elementary first graders adopted Beanie Babies and committed to reading to them for at least 15 minutes every night. It's part of the Rescue Readers Pilot Program in partnership with the Tuscaloosa Career and Technology Academy. I promise, I promise to take care of my rescue reader. To take care of my rescue reader. I will watch over it. I will watch over it. Keep it safe. Keep it safe.
right, today we are celebrating the launch of a pilot for Tuscaloosa Career and Technology Academy Rescue Readers. This is for first grade students at Woodland Forest Elementary as we were starting the pilot. A great opportunity for students to adopt a pet uh, as well as give them an incentive to read before third grade and to read while at home. The pilot for this, uh, for Tuscaloosa Career and Technology Academy Rescue Readers, is for students to adopt a pet today at uh, Woodland Forest and they will take it home. They will also get a book that will go with the pet. It uh, gives them an incentive that we would like for them to read in the evenings uh, at least 15 minutes to their pet. My baby baby is named Sparky because I want to name her and I like that name and I want to to read a lot with me and um, I like it when I have to read 15 minutes a um, night and it's fun when I read. Well, at the part when you go to read um, the 15 minutes of a book each night. Uh, so next, uh, the first graders will visit uh, TCTA on November the 21st where they will have a health checkup. They will bring their Benny baby with them to TCTA, go through our health science program as well as our vet science program and students will check up to make sure that they are reading those 15 minutes every night to their pet. Our biggest connection that we want to have with uh, students in the elementary level is making those connections to careers so that as they progress through elementary, middle school, into the high school, that they get exposure into TCTA and make connections to careers to uh, know which programs that they would like to participate in. Dozens of students and their parents showed up for fun and games and of course reading at the University Place Elementary School Family Literacy Night. And Woodland Forest Elementary School added a little twist to their literacy night by making it all digital and showing parents how students are using technology to learn. Tonight is literacy night, but obviously at Woodland Forest we try to put our, a spin on things at times. And tonight literacy night is really thinking about literacy through the terms of digital literacy. We're having our parents and students come explore some of the ways our um, teachers are using technology to build up our reading skills, but also enhance their students' love of reading. Um, and make them kind of get that shift from being just consumers of technology to producers of original content and appliers with technology. So it's all about literacy. We know we still teach the foundational skills, but we want to show off some of the innovative ways that we're trying to engage students. Uh, we know that we can't uh, just routinely uh, fight Fortnite and Instagram and uh, Madden football. We got to meet students where they are and find those ways to hook them in, engage them, because we know down the line their future Literacy for them, it's going to be on a device of some kind. The, the text and the reading and the information that they come across, they're going to interact with that on a digital platform of some kind. So tonight is really about that. It's about the promotion that we're doing in that, um, the work that our teachers are doing in that, the innovations that we have there, and trying to make sure that our parents and students see that um, there's a lot of different ways to go about developing a student's uh, reading ability, but also their love of reading and preparing them for the future. We have stuff all the way down for a pre-K student that would read and, and code a, a caterpillar all the way up to uh, fifth grade where they are creating their own books. Uh, we have a green screen where a student would do reader's theater 
um, and, and be able to do a variety of, of backgrounds and digital effects with that. Uh, we have um, stations where students are learning to uh, fluent, do fluency practice with music. Uh, we really do try to have a variety of approaches because that's where you try to find out what specific application is going to stick or really engage with one particular student. Five Northridge High School students were recently named National Merit Semifinalists and they'll have a chance to buy for millions of dollars in scholarship. Let's meet those students. So it was very exciting. I found a list and my dad sent me a text saying, oh, I saw your name on this list, you got it. And that was really exciting. And especially when I saw the other people who had gotten it as well, everyone's just so deserving. So it was very exciting. I was excited. Um, I mean, I wasn't too surprised because it's easy to kind of predict if you look at your scores in like last year's uh, recipients. But I was definitely excited and um, I don't know, it made me happy. And it was very exciting when we got the news. Um, I know I'm in great company with the other um, semi-finalists and it was just very exciting for us. It's exciting. I wasn't sure if I would manage to make the cut for being a National Merit semi-finalist when I took the CSAT. Um, it's definitely an honor, but I'm kind of nervous about the whole process of like applying to be a finalist. Um, I'm probably going to go to college at the University of Alabama, but I'm not sure what I'm going to major in just yet. And my dad teaches engineering, so I might do that. Um, so I'm currently applying to many different colleges. We'll find out starting in December and going through March. Um, and I'm thinking about going into like political science and economics so I can do like political economy policy. Um, for college, I'm not sure where I want to go yet. Um, I'm looking at Bryce, Tulane, and WashU, and Auburn. Um, and then for a major, I want to do engineering, probably environmental or aerospace. Um, I'm planning on double majoring in communications and environmental science, and my top choice school right now is Tulane, but I'm applying to eight different schools. So, so I'm applying to a lot of places. I don't have any specific one picked out yet. Um, we'll see, hopefully, you know, sometime early in spring where I'm going. Um, but I have too many things I want to study. I'm interested in international relations and neuroscience as majors, and I also want to study linguistics and Russian and Khmer, which is the national language of Cambodia, and all sorts of things. To get eighth graders ready to meet business and industry professionals at the annual West Alabama Worlds of Work at Shelton State Community College, Northridge Middle School invited in a variety of professionals for a workforce workshop. So we've been participating with World of Works Expo for several years now and we decided this year that we really wanted to prepare our students more for the experience, not so much the field trip and the excitement of going and seeing and doing, but really to be prepared for what to look for, who to look for, who would really speak to them. Um, with it being a huge field trip. We didn't want to lose the, the value of what they would be doing. So we're having a workforce workshop for our eighth grade students. And in their core classes throughout the day they will have a different activity to prepare them not only for tomorrow but even the takeaway after a while. Um, for example, in their math classes they're doing a lot of soft skills, uh, interview skills, preparing for how do you determine what job to apply for. And in their language arts classes they're having some follow-up with thank you letters and, and how do you network after the fact. But one part of this um, workshop that we're really excited about is we also have guest speakers from the community coming in. So today our speakers, and they range from, um, we have uh, construction and welding to a veterinarian, to an attorney, to a caterer, um, all different variety of workforce represented today just so our students can kind of have a mini workshop on how to speak to them tomorrow. They may not see these individuals, but to have that, you know, what are you looking for when you interview and when you apply? So the speakers that you saw were Taylor Pierce. She is owner and um, caterer at Gourmet Kitchen. Um, a little background on that is that is a uh, recent addition to the Tuscaloosa community, but it was a, a, a business she started out of her own kitchen and out of her own garage where she sold casseroles um, through word of mouth. And it grew such that now she has a, her own business. And then we also had Chewy Okoye. 
Mr. Okoye is from the Tuscaloosa Career Center in town. And so what he's speaking with the students on more so than his personal experience is how to network and find, um, build a community of your own within the business population. Okay, so we also had Matt Freeman join us. He works for the Tuscaloosa City Schools at TCTA. He's one of our welders that teaches programs to high school students. Uh, they are actually, you know, able to start his class in 10th grade and then carry on from that point throughout high school and beyond. And that's what he's speaking to our students about today. When we come back, we'll show you scenes from Parent Visitation Day at elementary schools. And we have sports highlights coming up too. It's next on Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools. Don't go away. Keep up with the latest Tuscaloosa City Schools news. Check out exciting photos and informative videos by liking the Tuscaloosa City Schools on Facebook. Log on to facebook.com slash TCS Board of Ed for the latest in City Schools news. Teachers across Tuscaloosa are preparing the next generation of leaders and their efforts are made easier with your support. From the classroom, to the community, to the playing field, see how city school students are making an impact. Watch Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools Monday through Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. and Thursday and Friday at 6.30 p.m. on Comcast Channel 20 and UVerse Channel 99. For, for up-to-the-minute notices on important Tuscaloosa City Schools happenings, follow us on Twitter at TCS Board of Ed. We would love your help as a Junior Achievement Volunteer. If you love children and you don't mind learning lessons to present, you're qualified. We will provide all of the training that you need and all of the materials. It's no cost to you other than your time. If you're interested in learning more about the program, the training takes about 45 minutes. Uh, you can contact me, Carla Harris, at carla.harris at ja.org or you can reach me by phone at 205-391-0335. We would love to have your help. Welcome back. Well, every November, the Tuscaloosa City Schools celebrates Parent Visitation Day. This year, Rock Quarry Elementary School took annual events, Rock Fest, and International Day, and turned them into their Parent Visitation Celebration. International Day is usually the day that we celebrate all the cultures that exist here at Rock Quarry Elementary School and typically we've done it in the spring but our theme for the school year this year is This Is Us and everything about International Day is us and so we decided to combine the two and put it on Parent Visitation Day and so far it's been a wonderful success. We've had a fantastic turnout from our parents being able to facilitate sessions. Um, many parents just coming to visit just to take part in the activities and the students are absolutely loving it. That's one of the reasons we started International Day is just to get our students to understand that um, you know we are all here together. We're one big Rock Quarry family, but we are made up of so many different parts from all places around the world. And it just helps us to understand uh, the perspective that somebody else sees the world from. And so we want not only our students engaged, but also our parents engaged um, in the learning of our kiddos uh, each and every day. And so to invite them on, um, on campus creates that um, just transparency that you know we like to show everybody what it is we do, how we do it, the excellence that we like to maintain every single day. Um, and this also gives them a way to be really hands-on with everything that we're doing uh, throughout International Day today. Parent Visitation Day at Arcadia Elementary School featured a Hispanic Heritage Showcase. This is a special day for Arcadia. Here we have our Hispanic celebration and we have crafts for them. We have a Hispanic video that we're sharing with them, Hispanic read aloud, selfies. We have our Hispanic table that has all kind of Hispanic artifacts from all of our Hispanic um, cultures. And we have our parents who participated as well and brought in Hispanic food for our families to sample. And we also have a Hispanic artist here to bless us with music. Also gives them a chance to just learn about different cultures. We know um, that we have these families here, but we don't know a lot of their backgrounds. And we know that they're not from just one um, Spanish-speaking place. So. Our Hispanic celebration gives the other kids a chance to learn about our Hispanic families from different countries. Parents showed up at the Alberta School of Performing Arts to celebrate the day with their children and get some much needed information. We're having Parent Visitation Day today and the students are able to go um, visit with their parents in their classrooms and we have different organizations like Bryant Bank, um, the Public Library, Indian Rivers came. Um, to visit with us and spread information with the parents. 
We need the parents involved in the education of our students, and the more the parents are involved, the greater the student's learning will become. The partners are a very important part of uh, TASPA. Um, they come and they talk with our students, um, they talk with our parents about different resources like banking, uh, mental health, um, encouraging students to read through the public library. In middle school football action, the Northridge Middle School Jaguars hosted their inner city rival, the West Lawn Falcons. The Jaguars beat the Falcons 28-20, and they hope to duplicate the feat when they travel to play the Eastwood Huskies in their next game. Northridge Middle squeaked out a tight 14-8 victory over Eastwood, but Eastwood came back to win the City County Championship. When well, high school football action, the Bryant Stampede are enjoying a great season on the gridiron, and they hope to pick up their first victory ever against the McAdory Yellow Jackets in a key region game.
happy homecoming at Northridge High School on a rainy night as the Jaguars picked up their first victory of the season, 42-14 over Brookwood. <laughs> Well, the Central Falcons are enjoying a terrific season on the volleyball court, and they hosted the Paul W. Bryant Stampede and the Holt Ironman in a tri-match. Keep up with the latest TCS news and information. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and connect with us on YouTube and Instagram at TCS Board of Ed. And visit www.tuscaloosacityschools.com to check out our new look on our website. Thank you for watching this show and supporting the Tuscaloosa City Schools. We'll see you next time. Teachers across Tuscaloosa are preparing the next generation of leaders and their efforts are made easier with your support. From the classroom to the community to the playing field, see how city school students are making an impact. Watch Inside Tuscaloosa City Schools Monday through Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. and Thursday and Friday at 6.30 p.m. on Comcast Channel 20 and UVerse Channel 99.